it's the day before spring. It's March 20th in Atlanta, Georgia, south of the north and north of the south. We're at Villa International. Uh, Villa is a place where people from all over the world uh, come to study primarily with Emory University, the Rollins School of Medicine, and the School of Law, and also with the Centers for Disease Control. Uh, Villa's mission is to provide affordable housing to those people who need it, uh, whether it's temporary short-term or temporary long-term. I'm Dan Crow, your eco-inspector, and we're going to go over some building science here from a practical point of view. We're in the office wing that was built in 1998. They've had all kinds of moisture problems related to this group of offices and hallway. The reason was we had supply air going out, feeding the rooms, but an inadequate return air pathway. If you look above me here, you'll see the original return that went into a closet. Um, and this was in a very ineffective and did not did not balance the system out, primarily because there weren't enough, there wasn't a return air pathway coming in. If you look down below me, you see an improvement done by George Gary Mechanical, where we've extended the return air and a wonderful four inch filter out into the common area. In addition, we've cut a grill through the door to provide a return air path. You have to allow the air to get back to the air hand on the system to be reheated and recooled. If you don't, the laws of physics apply. And what that means is, if you don't provide enough return air path, physics will make it. And the physics in this particular area manifested themselves in two ways. One, air was pulled from above the ceiling, the unconditioned attic, into the system. Number two, air was pulled from a door that's behind you in the camera uh, field and also from a crack in the wall. So we were pulling in the winter cold dry air into the system from outside and in the summer warm moist air into the system. And when this happened and we reached a, another physics type idea which is uh, dew point or condensation, we increased the amount of moisture that was in the building and this closet behind me that was nice and clean and white turned green with mold. The door behind you, which is a metal door, turned black with mold. So because we did not have an adequate return air path, not only did we lose comfort, not only did we lose energy, but we really affected the health of the occupants of this building. And this is what building science is. Okay, here's the white door that was black. It's well gasketed and well sealed, but that really doesn't matter. If you don't have enough return air, we're, we're going to cause problems with the door and the door you can feel cold to the touch because it's metal it is insulated but the fact is if you're constantly sucking on this door you're going to pull that cold air in a dew point is reached because of the cold metal and when you reach a dew point uh, mold forms if you have uh, a big delta a big difference in temperature and moisture then mold can tend to form. So imagine this white door completely black with mold. Here we are, this is part two of, of looking how this system was originally put together and why it was wrong and how we could determine what was going on. So we have a heat pump air handler. We you, we'll show you in a minute where the old return air vent just came to this room. The metal down here was just an open filter. Uh, again, George Geary Mechanical came in, put this very tight turn, had this fabricated to us, communicate back out into the hallway. What I could feel when I did the first analysis of this space was that air was coming from two places. Return air was being made up from two areas. One is through a crack to the outside of the building. And I can still feel we got a little bit of air moving through here. Right? So outside air directly into the building. The other one was from the ceiling, and we have these standard industrial ceiling tiles, institutional ceiling tiles, and I can see cobwebs up here, so we know that the air was moving in through here. So the return air path that was originally provided was not really where the return air was coming from. 
And when this happens, when you have an unbalanced system, return air being made up from outside the building, you are hoovering, to use a vacuum term, you're hoovering in all sorts of contaminants, moisture, and heat that you don't want inside the building. Most residential systems are not carefully balanced, and this is something we can look to improve the health, energy, use, and efficiency in the home. Okay, so here we are. We're, in, we're inside. Get a little tight view. Here's where the old opening was, and we've, uh, George has sealed that up. You also see the open ceiling tile up to the attic. So air will move following a path of least resistance. If it's easier for the air to come down from the attic or from the outside, it will. That is the law of physics, specifically the second law of thermodynamics. Anyway, here's the simple physics, right? You're standing, you're in a room, the camera's in a room where a supplier is coming out. The air wants to get into the hallway. What do you do if the door is closed? You unbalance the system. How did our heat and air contractor balance the system? He installed a pass-through grill, um, which is simply an opening between uh, the two rooms, the one with supplier and the one where the return is located to balance the system. We need to look at this, particularly in bedrooms and residential homes. Very often the carpet will block the bottom of the door and prevent air from moving from the supply end to the return end.